curve sketching using derivatives and other features and this is the first of two videos and we're going to tie in um, what everything has been basically culminating to um, bring it all together and um, go forward from there and um, we have uh, a learning goal use specific features found from a function its first derivative and second derivative tests and we're going to use all that stuff to sketch a function and um, we're going to look at open domains and specific or restricted domains okay now it's very important that you're watching um, this video in the appropriate order okay um, if you want videos about some of the things I'm about to go through um, you need to go back and look at that I, I do have videos and all these all those things Okay, so just go back to the playlist for this topic. So we have some assumed knowledge, and I'm assuming um, that you know all about these things, which I'm going to outline just very briefly. So this is all that stuff we're going to tie in together, you see. So assumed knowledge, and that you know about stationary points okay and you know the types maximums maxima minima um, we have points of inflection okay so we have um, going to use POY um, as the uh, short way of saying points of inflection and if they're stationary points these are points of horizontal inflection so perhaps I'll use this okay uh, because there's uh, non-horizontal points of inflection which aren't actually stationary points but more about that in a minute okay now you should be all over um, what the first derivative tells us okay so let's just call it dy dx here you could call it f dash of x okay because um, we go with these stationary points we're going to look at f first derivative dy dx and uh, second derivative we're going to talk about that later on dy dx and d squared y dx squared but if we focus on, uh, on what dy dx tells us it tells us things like whether it's an increasing function or at a certain interval whether it's an increasing function there or decreasing function or again whether we have stationary points and again the uh, those are the three there point of horizontal inflection maxima or minima let's have a look at some examples so we've got some parts of curves here and here's two examples of an increasing function there's one there's another one Okay, and there's no axes drawn here, right? But even though this one is um, it's getting less steep, it's still increasing in uh, along the interval shown. This one uh, is increasing as well. Okay, so that the gradient is positive at all times, and hence dy dx tells us that. Okay, and this is for a decreasing function. There's two examples there. Okay, and there's three examples of points of horizontal inflection okay and uh, that's when the value of dy dx equals zero at some stage and uh, just to clarify there that's the one I'm looking at because this is a minimum and that is a maximum okay they all have the first derivative equal to zero you should be all over, all over that if you're watching this video at the right stage in your learning so we should be all over what the second derivative tells us in our prior learning so whether you call it f double dash of x or d squared y dx squared it tells us about the concavity all right if you're watching this video in the right order you should know about that the concavity so we have concave up like that concave down and then we have uh, points of inflection the two general types here so we've got a point of horizontal inflection here and just a point of inflection that's not horizontal okay now see the tangent 
okay now that what these have in common is that the concavity changes you've re you've looked at this before haven't you all right I've spelled concavity wrong darn it con cavity all right you should be all over that so the so concavity is changing from um, a concave down to a concave up or vice versa okay and that's a point of inflection whether it's horizontal inflection or non horizontal okay now let us consider um, a function and whether you want to call it f of x or y let's say we have a quartic okay so x to the power 4 minus 4x cubed plus 10 let's say we have that alright and if we find the first derivative dy dx we get 4x squared sorry 4x cubed 12x squared okay so 4x cubed take 12x squared and we take the second derivative using Leibniz notation if you want 12x squared take 24x okay let's do a bit of an analysis which will lead us nicely um, into our second video uh, on these three things now you should be all over what the relationship um, is between them not just the fact that one is a derivative of the next of the next but what they tell us about the original function here this one okay what do these ones tell us about that so if we got the original function there in red um, if we put the derivative of it okay and that's the one that I worked out before 4x cubed take 12x squared and then the derivative of that we can see a few things okay so what do we see if we take a quick scan we can see that there's um, this intervals where the curve is decreasing there's intervals where the curve is increasing there's a, it seems to be a point of inflection and then a minimum turning point perhaps there's another um, point of inflection that's not horizontal okay so there's a few goodies there now what happens if we look at the red function compared to its derivative hmm. So it's got a cubic shape. Well, that shouldn't be a surprise, should it? And then the one after that's got a quadratic shape. Okay. So we also see special things that we're going to have a close look at now. And so uh, I've put in some color coding to match the graphs there. So we've got um, the graphs again. If we're looking at places where the original graph, remember that's the red one, where it's increasing and decreasing with what intervals is it increasing and decreasing one way we can determine that for this red graph is to look at the first derivative okay so the blue graph uh, it it's in the negatives its value is negative even though it's increasing it's negative up to the point it looks like the origin doesn't it zero zero and if we look at the original function okay it's decreasing until its x value is zero but then it's it has this moment of inflection and then it decreases again so notice how the blue curve in that interval is always below the x-axis so its value is negative now that links to prior learning that we've done before okay and that continues on until we get to the point where we have the blue curve the derivative okay it's actually above the x-axis here and you notice that the original graph in red starts to climb so it's increasing there so when the blue graph is below the x-axis all right the derivative we have a decreasing uh, function and we have an increasing function when the derivative is above the x-axis that is prior learning now with other points of interest we can see around here on the original graph okay around there on the original graph remember that is the red graph okay we have the uh, point zero ten on this graph here okay so um, that that is point zero ten what is going on at point zero ten so what's what's happening at this point here well it looks like a stationary point doesn't it it looks like a point of horizontal inflection how can we check that well, if it is a point of horizontal inflection, there's a couple of ways we can use the first and the second derivative 
to work work that through to check it to verify that um, because it's a stationary point it should have the uh, the derivative should equal zero there at that point zero ten okay so this point here zero ten I might have been pointing at the wrong point sorry okay if I was doing that a moment ago so zero ten is what we're talking about here the first derivative graph should equal zero because that is one of our points of uh, stationary points okay it, it's one of them where the derivative equals zero so the blue graph does it equal zero because it's the derivative graph uh, gee I'm doing well and I'm pointing at the wrong things the blue graph yes it is it's zero um, so that's one thing the other thing we must check is the concavity changes so we need to look at the second derivative graph the green one I'll get it right this time um, and the green one needs to change its concavity uh, it needs to be different before and after we go past that point when x is zero and have a look at the green graph it's positive before x equals zero and after it's gone through x equals zero it's negative so that's true that is a point of inflection horizontal inflection so it's a point of horizontal inflection because it's a stationary point and the concavity changes before and after next I want to look at a point two two negative six so two negative six on the original function this is about there and we've got it looks like like I said before it could have been a point of inflection um, but not horizontal inflection uh, one of the other sorts so it could be uh, some sort of point of inflection all right and really we're looking at the concavity changing as I said before so we're looking at the second derivative function and when x equals 2 does the second derivative go from being um, one sign to the next sign indeed it does if we look at the green graph it's a negative and then when it passes to it's positive so yes indeed the next point of interest on the original function is at 3 negative 17 so 3 negative 17 let's check if that is a uh, turning point and let's check well yeah it's pretty obvious isn't it and what's the nature of that and we can check that by looking at the, both the first and the second derivative graphs the first derivative graph in blue okay it's uh, the gradient function essentially and yes it is zero there okay at that uh, point when x is three so good o and well um, we know that that should have a positive value for the second derivative at that point there and yes it does okay that's cool the next important thing along the lines of what we've got to do before the next video because that's when we're going to do an actual example of this curve sketching k par is this idea of the absolute or global maxima or minima in a graph versus local local maxima or local minima because sometimes they can be different and part of it depends on whether there's a restriction in the domain that can uh, have a lot to do with it sometimes okay and that is an important thing you've obviously you've touched on this in your past learning but we, we just sort of uh, basically looking at it in a way that's going to facilitate the next video when we do uh, curve sketching of all of these things because this is all going to be boiled down to eight steps you see now I want you to consider y equals x cubed plus 2 and let's say we're going to restrict the domain here uh, I'd like to use all different notation just to keep you on your toes and just to make sure you'll stay familiar with it and um, that shows you a restricted domain from negative 2 up to 1 inclusive okay and hey let's find the derivative okay that's 3x squared let's find the second derivative and that's 6x now you see the difference between a global and a local max and min um, basically you if you're looking at a certain interval of a curve or a function these maxima or minima will either occur at a stationary point or 
at an end point. Okay, and that can be plural too. So you have to check for these things, okay? Now, um, yes, you can draw a graph and just see, okay, but we're doing this analytically, okay? And so sometimes something can uh, have a maximum and that'll be the global maximum um, and, and the local, but uh, things vary. And let's have a look at this one. This one does seem to have a stationary point. Let's check that out, but it's very doubtful because of the, um, the nature of the climb that occurs after that that uh, that's going to be a maximum, right? Very, very slim chance of that. Now if we set the first derivative equal to zero, so 3x squared equals zero, we have the point x equals zero. Well, that we have the value of x as zero is the solution of that. And so that would give us, if you sub that into the equation, you get the point zero two. Okay, you sub it into the original equation, you get zero two. Okay, and so if we, uh, look at the second derivative there and we see that um, at x equals 0 it, the second derivative is 0 but if we look at just before and just after so if we have a value of say um, something lower than 0 say negative x equals negative 1 and then we have something greater than 0 let's say x equals positive 1 the concavity changes and so that's a point of horizontal inflection is that stationary point the maximum, well it's unlikely. This process however um, does uh, also work for maxima and minima stationary points so it's important that you learn this step even though this point here is unlikely to be the max or the min. What we have to do is check the endpoints. Will the endpoints give us a, a y value of greater than 2? And I know there's a graph there staring you in the face, but we're doing this analytically. And will the minimum be lower than um, a y value of 2 Okay, for this interval? Well, to find the endpoints, uh, we simply just sub those uh, x values into the equa equation. And so remember it was from negative 2, the interval was from negative 2 up to 3 we sub those things into the original equation and lo and behold if we sub in negative 2 here we've got negative 2 cubed plus 2 which is negative 8 plus 2 which is negative 6 okay and then if we pl plug in the upper end um, sorry and that was 1 uh, originally sorry my bad um, we sub that into the equation and we get y equals 1 cubed plus 2 which is 3 okay and that value is less than the y value here at the stationary point so it's, it's not the stationary point in this case but it often is all right uh, it is it is the the uh, max and min, uh, global max and min, um, the absolute max and min for this interval is at the end points. All right. So uh, because uh, this value here, we've checked the stationary point, and two is not less than negative six. So negative six corresponds to the y value for the um, the global or absolute min, and vice versa. Three is bigger than two. So make sure you check the endpoints. Next video we'll go through a sketching example.